Hey folks, it's E Chip with Contentment Channel. I uh, was trying to get some work done here on Dinah. I had to take Dinah down, uh, take a break from digging the basement for a little bit so that I could replace some hoses on Dinah. They should be in day after tomorrow. It's a nice day, so they're having fun. But anyway, so Dinah's down for a little bit. But while Dinah is down, I'm going to turn my attention to something that uh, you've never seen something new and hopefully I can get it working properly today. This is an RV generator and I picked it up several months ago from an Amish auction in the area. Um, nobody else bid on it because nobody knew what it was. Um, but I recognized it and I thought it might come in handy to help out Buzz. Now, Buzz has been doing fine, but the winter weather is really taking his toll on Buzz. It's time to do a uh, conditioning on the batteries. There have been more cloudy days than usual uh, so far uh, the past calendar year. And, you know, that really hurts Buzz. That really hurts those batteries because uh, I need the power here to work. While we're doing that, I'll turn my attention to this because, because one of the nice things about Buzz's uh, inverter is it will accept uh, AC power, uh, which will switch over and charge the batteries in case they get low. When the inverter sends a signal, it'll start this automatically and charge it. I don't know if I want to go that route, but I do need to uh, figure out what's going on with these things. When I first got it, I started it up and it was not producing power to the uh, 110 uh, circuit down there. So thankfully I found the diagnosis and repair manual online for this. And maybe it'll be an easy fix. The motor starts, it runs just fine, but uh, it's not producing electricity and we'll, we'll find out why. Well, it wouldn't start. Turns out this little fuel pump right here wasn't pumping. So I, Gave it a little wrap with a screwdriver like you just saw. Push the button and it worked fine. It has primed the engine now. Let's see if we can get this thing to start. Huh. Well, I figured out the problem. It's got a sticking float uh, needle. I need to find a rebuild kit for this thing. Rebuild the carburetor and then I can diagnose it. So I'll have to do this another day. Nothing's getting done today. What's this? What's this? They took one look at that snow and turned right around and came back inside. Let's open the door and see what happens. Oh, goodness. How fun. Screen porch is covered. That's where the sidewalk ends. <laughs> I didn't see it. I was zipping through here. I didn't see it. It was too late. We got about, I don't know, 18 inches of snow here. This truck can't clear it. So we'll get the stuff out of it come back in the morning with uh, either Dinah or Dumpy or something we'll drag it back out of here well I've been clearing on the backhoe 
Wormski's been down here uh, trying to get uh, Rusty off of high center. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it really got in the snow. So it just pretty high here. So it got caught. Once we get Rusty out of here, we'll finish clearing this road as far as we can so other people can get through here because this is you know it's a county maintained road but they don't plow it they grade it every once in a while but they do not plow it boy i sure am grateful to have a machine like dyna uh to be able to you know cut myself out uh, in case the snows get too high so it's really nice to have a machine like that it's not really built for plowing snow but uh it's kind of nice so anyway folks it's a uh, interesting day as you can tell the wind's blowing we're taking down the greenhouse it uh, just turned out to be too much of a mess the wind is destroying it and actually it's starting to tear up the shouse a little bit from all the buffeting and uh, so it's coming back down Well, that sucks. What are you doing there, Sweetsy? What are you guys doing? What are you guys doing up there in the truck? We're not leaving. We're not going anywhere. Okay? But you can hang out. What? What? Are we ever going to get this basement hole dug? We're never getting anything done. <laughs> And the greenhouse is down except for the doors. Um, I gotta get the jack out and pull these posts. But I had Wormski out here yesterday and we finished pulling this down. He did most of the work. But uh, then I asked him to put those those two by fours there, make them nice and straight. Because I wanna use this front of the shouse as a jig uh, to make uh, certain building materials for the house. So. So the front of the shouse is 24 feet. I can build a jig right on the front of this shouse that will help me assemble eye joists. So I'm gonna try that because it, it, there's hardly any cost involved in, in doing it. And uh, so we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll make a test piece and see how it goes. Well, this is where we're at and uh, it's just, it's a mess. I mean, the, the sand is so loose that it just keeps caving in on us. So the hole needs to get bigger and bigger. Um, we've been building a, a ramp into the hole down there where we can get Dinah in, but Dinah keeps getting stuck in the loose sand. We keep getting stuck in there. You have a firm layer and then everything underneath that's really loose and just caves in and undermines it. Then the top falls in. It's just a mess. It's a total mess. Well, gotta get this basement built. Hello! Hi! <laughs> How are you? I'm okay! Yeah. That's, a, that's a pretty decent depth. We're obviously going to have to do a, some hand digging to, you know, get it there, but it's looking pretty good. How many feet? Yeah. After this? No, by hand. Oh. Well, you're at nine feet right none. I, I mean, we're just going to have to basically level it out, compact it, maybe go a little bit deeper in spots, but not much. It's looking good. Okay, here we are down inside the hole. As you can see, we've got sort of these 
outlines of footings. Now, we're not going to dig down because uh, we've already dug down. This is actually, this should be the bottom of the footing. We actually want to fill these, we want to frame these up and fill them with gravel up to this level, the level of these um, stakes here. And then uh, once that's done, it's fully compacted, we will lay these plates down on top of these stakes and screw them on so that we don't get any movement in them when we're trying to frame the walls on top of them. So, happy with where we're at so far, Wormski? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I mean, oh. Today's been pretty good. Today's been pretty good. All right. <laughs> Hitting it again. Wormski's doing a new dance. It's called the Tamper. I think we're almost ready for some landscape fabric and some gravel. We're going to tamp this like 100,000 more times. Well, we've tamped it a lot. We'll, we'll do some more for sure, but we're getting there. We've been going through leveling and uh, tamping, you know, compacting this uh, as hard as we can because this little basement foundation here, this permanent wood foundation has got to support the weight of, of course, the basement itself, and then the floor above it, which is a utility room with a four inch concrete floor on it, and then a second story above that. So uh, we have got to make sure that these footings are hard compacted and uh, you know that there's no uh, give or movement in the soil underneath so that it will accept all this weight that we're gonna put on it. I hope you put that in a video. You do? Yeah. Why? Just put that sexy pose in the video. So, do you have to smooth it out? Like make it all flat and neat, like a nice pretty package? Well, as, as flat as you can, but I mean, uh, this is about as pretty as it's going to get. So you're going to fill that cavity, you're going to fill these cavities with gravel. All it needs to do is keep the gravel from embedding into the sand, you know, in the footing. And a good time was had by all today, huh, Robert? I guess so, yep. Did you enjoy the dust? Uh, it wasn't that bad. It wasn't that bad? Oh, I thought it was. It's incredible. But we got it all graveled in. A few more steps. And we'll be able to get framing on top of it. Did you have a good time? Yeah. Warm ski? Yeah. <laughs> a rectangle full of gravel. And uh, it's level. It's square. It's not done. Um, still got to uh, remove the boards that are sort of bordering. The, well, first of all, we need to pick up this fabric, throw it in over the gravel, fill in the sides on the other outsides of the board, pack it down real well, uh, you know, compact it, and then. Uh, we can pull those vertical boards out. Then the boards will be used as the sill plates for the actual basement uh, frame walls. So this is uh, step one, I guess you'd call it, of 
a uh, permanent wood foundation basement. So if you want to know more about it, I suggest you get a hold of the Permanent Wood Foundation Council. I think it's part of the Southern Pine Council uh, or something like that. Lots of good information on how these are built. And uh, uh, if you live in a pretty dry climate with very little groundwater, then this is the way to go. A lot cheaper than pouring a basement or building a block basement and uh, just as strong. So You're saying goodbye to me. Yep. I'm leaving to Alaska. I'll be gone for forever. So peace out. Yep, he's going to Alaska and then he's coming back to college. So we're gonna miss him. He's been a good worker and it's gonna be hard to replace him.